All right, welcome to my shop. Today we're going to do a little preventative maintenance and check the brakes, the old hook brakes on this 49 Chevrolet pickup. And do some greasing, maybe change the oil. Just go give it a, a little go over. It's been about uh, a little over 3,000 miles since the last uh, maintenance. Uh, we'll see what it looks like. All right, I didn't show it uh, getting jacked up, but I've got it up on jack stands at uh, all four corners so I can uh, get my slightly uh, round self underneath here and uh, do an inspection and do the uh, greasing. Let's do a quick look under here and see what it looks like. I already knew the 216. It it's weeping oil just about out of every seal it's got. I don't know if the lights can show it, but uh, that rear end is getting a lot of oil. I'm going to guess the uh, bushing in that torque tube is probably, the bushing in the uh, seal is probably war. And I bet you when I check that transmission oil, it's going to be low. But anyway, otherwise it doesn't look too bad. That muffler, I picked up at a muffler shop and when I had them make me the, the pipe up and it's worked pretty good. That's a two inch pipe, which is really, the experts will tell you that's too big, uh, but it works fine. I don't see any loss of lower, uh, any torque at low RPM, so I believe it's all right. Anyway, I'm going to rotate the tires too. Uh, they're about 5,000 miles, it's about 6,000 miles on those tires. So, uh, and there's the bottom of the battery box. All in all, not too bad. This is still pretty original underneath here. Uh, uh, it sat in the dry for uh, at least 20 years in a barn, so uh, it's not too bad. There's a few holes in that floor pan, but not much. So anyway, I'm going uh, to pull the wheels. Check the uh, play in uh, the kingpins and the uh, wheel bearings, and I'll kind of cover that a little bit, and we'll go from there. All right, what we're going to do is check the uh, play in this bearing and possibly even the uh, kingpin. And you want to do that before you take the wheel off. Basically, you grab it at the top and the bottom and you wiggle it back and forth, okay? You're looking for any, any play, all right? Now, play can be in the bearing or it could be in the kingpin. You'll have to determine that if you get any. A little bit of play is okay. A lot of play is not. The other side was good. I don't know if you can see that, but there's just a hair play there. Nothing there. Nothing there. So what I'm going to do when I pull this off and I re-pack those front uh, front uh, wheel uh, bearings, I'm going to... Uh, uh, check it again and go from there. All right, now we're going to look at all the grease fittings here. All right. Try to put a little light on the subject. Here's one. On the other side of this shackle here is another one. I don't know if you can see that or not. Two, three, four, five. That's only that's the kingpin. Six and seven. So you got seven zerks to hit with grease. 
on this side and we'll do the grease on the other side too. I've got a pneumatic grease gun which makes it a lot easier. So that's how I'm going to do it. And uh, you can use your pumper. Lord knows I've done enough of that. So anyway, we're going to grease it up while we got it up. Okay, I've had two Zerks that I couldn't get grease through and I've replaced them. One on the other side on the drag link and right down here the lower kingpin. Now there's an upper. You can see where I greased it. I greased it until it comes out, starts coming out. So there's the hole. Make sure you clean it out real good before you get it out. You can get it out without pulling the wheel backing plate. There's the old one. It's kind of a not a 45. Uh, I guess it is a 45. I'm going back in with a straight like that because that's what's on the other side and it was real easy to get to on the bottom. I picked up this kit off eBay. It was, uh, I don't know, 10 bucks and it covers all these sizes right here. So I would recommend if you're going to have these old trucks and cars that require greasing that you get this kit and a pneumatic grease gun wouldn't hurt either so anyway I'm gonna put that in there just wanted to show you that it did need I did have to replace some of these old Zerks wanted to show the uh, what's called the lever action shocks that came on the 49 Instead of the tube they changed over to the tube style in 50 that rod there that goes down is slightly longer than the one that goes on the front so I just wanted to point that out another difference with the 49 Okay, this is the driver's side or left side rear wheel. And I've already pulled this off. I didn't have to uh, back it off. But the drums actually should come off this easy if they're not worn. Now, this drum looks pretty good on the inside, a little bit of dirt. But what you want to feel for is a lip right down here. All right. Now, that lip generally the shoes when they wear into the drum will wear in and there's just perhaps a sixteenth of an inch here where you could get a lip where the shoes don't wear down and that is what will keep this drum from sliding off that easy what you'll have to do is these are the adjusters right here okay now this is a huck brake in case anybody's curious uh, this is what came stock or standard on this uh, 49 uh, up until they went to the Bendix and I can't tell you what year it was they went to the Bendix I want to think it was uh, it was later up and around 54 but I could be mistaken but anyway one of the unique characteristics of the uh, hook brake is that instead of an adjuster being down here that will adjust the shoes out or in at the set with one adjuster the hook brake, you actually have two adjusters. One, this one, for the front shoe, this one for the back. So you have to turn them in opposite directions to either spread them or bring them in. Now, if you can't get that drum off, more than likely, these shoes are worn and they've wore into the drum enough to build that ridge I was talking about. So you'll have to bring them in enough to clear that ridge and bring them out. Then you want to go and get the uh, drum turned. But in my case, it didn't need it. Came off fairly easy. I've got a cheat sheet that I made up. 
on how to adjust these hook brakes. And uh, I've based it on front and rear, uh, depending upon which, uh, which one I'm doing. And of course, I can't get to it easy on my uh in my book here i've got a book that i made up uh that i keep all my notes and everything on i thought i had it towards the front uh that's some pictures of what it looked like when i first got it here we go hook brake adjustment i don't know if this can be seen with the uh coating on it let's see but what what i've got here, I'll bring it out, and I can put it back in so it doesn't shine as much. Here we go. All right. All right. This is the front two brakes, left, right. Left being is if you're sitting in the driver's seat. Left would be the driver's side front, and this is the rear. Now, what I'm showing here with the arrows is the direction I will turn those adjusters to spread them out, to make them wider. Let's see if I can get a better picture. So you can see on the, when looking at the wheel, the left adjuster, of course this is from the back, you turn it up to spread it, the right adjuster you turn it back, okay, you turn it down. And the same here, that's when looking at the brake from the back side. And then here's the rear. Uh, you can play with it, make your own, once you've got the shoe off, I'm sorry, the drum off, you could uh, determine better. But uh, if that's a good enough picture, you may want to just copy that because that's worked good for me. In this case, I didn't have to do it. Uh, one thing I've known about it for a while is my parking brake lever has snapped up towards the, uh, a pivot point. And uh, that's a common problem on these old trucks. And I've already ordered the parts. So I'm going to attempt to swap it off. As you can see right here, that adjuster right there should be going to this cable. And right there you can see where the cable busted off the adjuster. So basically my parking brake's only been holding on one side. Which has been good enough, but since I got it up on jack stands, I'm going to address it. And we'll see what we can do. Okay, I don't have to totally disassemble the brakes to get to them. This hook right here hooks in to the parking brake cable right there. Get a light in there. There you go. You see, there's the hook. Let's see if I can hold that in a way. Well, anyway, there's the bracket that that hook gets it goes into. See, he goes down and. That sits in there like that, okay? So that's got to come out. These two bolts here, bolt on this side and there's a bolt on the other side will release that uh, whole assembly there and hopefully I can just slide it back out. All right. Okay, here's my aftermarket new brake cable. That end, I had to purchase it separate and put it on. I wasn't sure if the old one would bolt on to it. But in looking at the lengths, see this plate here, see how much longer this one is. Now that's a good half inch to an inch. Uh, not quite a half inch maybe. I don't know if that's going to cause me a problem or not. Uh, I loosened this clamp. This was all the way down to here. In other words, that was like clamped right way up there now look at the difference so I loosened the clamp and moved it all the way up as far as it would go in the, uh, the bottoms out right there you, you can see on that uh, steel end so hopefully that won't stop me from being able to use it All right, we've got it in there. I haven't hooked the front end yet. I just wanted to show a couple tricks that uh, makes doing these hook brakes a little easier. 
and having tie wraps is a good thing to do. If you notice, I got some tie wraps here. There's two of them that held these two cups in while I had the shoes out. What happens is they'll slowly bleed out this way and there's no pressure on the system, but there's a little residual. So what you have to do, take a big pair of these channel locks, squeeze them all the way in, and put your tie wrap on there to hold them in. What that'll do is make it a lot easier to put this spring in right here, okay? Now these shoes, they flop because the pivot's down here at the bottom, right here, okay? So they'll flop open like I believe in the previous uh, frame it showed it. So I've got some tie wraps going through this hole to this hole to hold them up. So by doing that, it holds it all up and you can just work on getting that spring in because that spring, it takes all you got. I used a pair of vice grips and I grab it and hit the edge and I use this hub here to help give, uh, to help get a little leverage and then when you get it over there bang and it'll pop in and stay not too bad but it could be a lot harder if you don't have tie wraps or something to hold these shoes up and to hold that uh those pistons in all right and uh now we're going to connect the front part of this and see what we got All right, we're underneath it. I wanted to show the connection to the uh, cross beam, the cross shaft for the uh, parking brake. There's a little light. I ended up having to use the old fork. The new one was too short. What happened was in the clamp here, the cable, the new cable, if I didn't clamp it on the metal part, it would slip. Now it has these rubber gaskets of some kind that uh, that are too thick to fit in the, the clamp. So by clamping it on the metal piece to keep the cable from moving back and forth, I had to go to the, the old fork, which is longer than the new fork. And uh, should work fine. Here's a uh, comparison how short it is. there see too short all right on adjusting what I did was it's off and I adjusted it to the off position I didn't read the manual maybe I should and we'll test it and see how it does uh, also I wanted to show the back of the wheel cylinder And uh, you can see how it clamps in. That long bolt was in it, and to tell you the truth, I found that useful in uh, lining up those two plates. There's two plates, and they're spring loaded to the uh, part that goes into the uh, the fork on the brake shoe. So anyway, wanted to show you that. Okay, we've got the wheels on, we've got all the brakes adjusted, but this right front one, which would be the passenger's hot side front. Right now I'm going to show you how easily this spins to show that it does need adjustment. And just spin it away. It should only go about three or four spins and then sort of the friction stop it down you want the brake shoes to just barely touch it now that's good for a mile per gallon i guess but it's not good for the hook brakes because properly uh, adjusted hook brakes will give you a good pedal uh, used to be that the uh that you would adjust the rears to get more pedal because because basically they're drums and most of the newer cars when i say newer 70 on up or discs but on the hook brakes, you need to have all of them adjusted in order to get a good pedal. You've got that single reservoir master cylinder, and that probably has something to do with it. So anyway, 
I'm going to attempt to crawl under here and adjust it, and I'm going to try to set it up and show you how we do it. Okay, I don't know how good you're seeing it, but I'll let, when I edit, if it's not visible, well then we'll uh, delete this scene. We're going to pull out these dust covers here. There's two, one for the back adjuster, but one for the front adjuster. Now, if you remember, well, then they're good. If you remember what it looked like when I did the rear back there, you got a, a good idea. Now, according to my map that I've made, the rear should go up, the front down. Now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the the front and adjust it down as, as much as it uh, as much as it's fun I have a feeling it's going to well there's a lot of drag so I'm gonna back it off a little so you can hear the pad just barely rubbing all right now I'm gonna do the a rear shoe I'm doing this all by feel so just a little more Generally, what you do is you take the uh, you adjust one till it completely stops. You can't turn the wheel. Then you back it off to where you can spin it. Then you do the the other one the same way. That's where I want it. See how it went a couple revolutions and it stops. And that's where I want it. And that's where we're going to keep it right there. All right. Trying to get a close up, you might, you may can see the adjuster wheels in there. Okay. Any of y'all new to the uh, stove bolt, maybe wondering where the master cylinder is. But there it is, right there. There's a plug. It covers that hole. I've taken it off and it, uh, I should have shined the light down there. Let's see. And there you go. And there it is. You take the cap off and there's how you fill it. Uh, this center pan I'm taking off. That's a patch I put over mine. Mine's a little rusty. And I got another patch there partially covering my battery tray. I'm going to check the battery too. But I'm pulling that pan off there so I can check the level of transmission fluid. I'd rather do it up top than on the bottom. So anyway, get back to you. Alright, I didn't show me filling, but I'll show the fill plug so you'll know it. Right there. That's the fill plug. What you want to do, what I've done, I use uh, 90W80 for my uh, my gear oil right here. Or 80, I'm sorry, 80W90 right here. And uh, you fill, since it's so hard to see, normally you fill to where you can just barely feel it at the bottom edge of that hole. I feel to the point where it starts, just starts to come out, and then I stop. In either case, that's real close to it. There's a shot of the master cylinder right under there. And here's the battery. Now I've got the uh, water caps off, and they are looking, all of them look good. They're, they're not low at all. Uh, so... I'm just going to wipe it down some, put it back together, and uh, I'm going to check my brake fluid too while we're at it, and uh, then we'll button this up. I haven't drained the oil yet, I'm going to start draining the oil too.
Okay, we've got the truck down off the jack stands. Uh, should be done underneath it. And uh, we're moving on into the engine compartment. Oh, I have changed the oil, and I did already change out the uh, oil filter too. I didn't uh, record that. I got in a hurry. Uh, this cartridge, this uh, filter canister that's on this is uh, actually came with the truck. And it was a dealer add-on according to the paperwork I, I got from uh, the original owner of this. Let's see if I can shine some more light on it. Uh, those stickers I picked up off an aftermarket place. Uh, S6. I don't know if that's accurate or not. But that's, uh, that's pretty much what I've... Uh, close as I can find to it. Now the filter cartridge I put in that is a, I like Wix uh, filters, so it's a 51100, 51 100. I've also put in a 51006, uh, which I think may come from some of these aftermarket uh, sub online suppliers, but the 51100, 51 or 51100 is the cartridge I put in here. and. Uh, the equivalent, uh, I believe, Fram would be an 1100, uh, which is similar. But I like the wicks, and they're about the same price. So uh, you unscrew this top. The filter should come with a new gasket, rubber gasket that goes on the top. And uh, when you pull it out, you'll have about so much oil left down in the bottom because the drain back hole in that uh, center uh, tube is about this high. So it retains some. Uh, there's a bolt down here on the bottom that you can pull out to drain that out or you can take it out with the rag either way you want. Uh, what I do is I'll fill it uh, I'll fill it up to that hole where almost when I put the new cartridge in and I set it in and I let the oil settle down. I like to fill it up when I put it back uh, put the new uh, cartridge in. All right. Now that's the oil bath oil filter I picked up off eBay. Uh, I believe it came on a, a period correct car, uh, but uh, it was orange when I got it, and uh, I'm not. Uh, I decided, well, it didn't look all that bad, so I'm leaving it orange. And uh, we're going to take it out and change the oil in the bottom of the pan. Lift the lid. And you can see here's the mesh insert and you can see it's coated with oil what I'm going to do is blow that out and uh, to get blow from down out to where any that oil it's designed to make that uh, that fill fitment that filament in there uh, which is some sort of a copper or brass uh, it's supposed to get the stuff to stick to it and what gets past it will stick down there in the bottom of this oil so I'm going to dump that oil clean the bowl out and uh, uh, put fresh oil in it blow that in element out and put it back together and we'll go from there Okay, now I'm going to check the points. I actually checked the points and the timing probably oh, a couple thousand miles ago, so it's not even been uh, long enough. But since I've got it open, I'm going to go ahead and check it. I looked at them. They don't look burnt. That feeler gauge is 18 thousandths. And I got it uh, on the high side of that cam lobe. And... There's just enough drag. I don't know if the video shows it, but the arm is not moving. You want it, you want some drag, but you don't want that arm to move. And there we go. You got to go at the right angle. So that's at 18,000. So those are used points. So I'm going to leave them at that. I'm just going to wipe everything else down in there. Too bad this uh, 216 is near the end of its, uh, its life cycle as far as... Uh, uh, in a condition that it's going to need rebuilt. It's got real bad uh, blow by, especially out those three vents on the valve cover. Uh, anybody that really has been observant, they can see where I've got some paper stuffed up that drain pipe there to keep 
any of that getting into the uh, cab because uh, I smell like burnt oil after a good long run and I don't know if the video shows it good but there's uh, an oil film just over everything try as I might uh, I can't get that valve cover to stop leaking down there at that back corner and uh, but I think I got the side cover done on the last time I replaced that gasket uh, I've got the thicker cork gasket in that valve cover uh, I adjusted the valves also about 2,000, 2,500 miles ago. So I'm not gonna even pull that cover off. It's, I've got it uh, glued down good and it's about as good as I can get it as far as leaking. I don't have any loud valve tapping or any performance problems, so I'm not going to open it up at this point. Uh, at a later date, yet to be determined, I've got another engine sitting here ready to go in that. That's a 235. It's been uh, bored 60 over uh, the uh, crank. It's a new uh, three-quarter uh, cam in it. Uh, uh, those are 232, uh, 34, I think. Uh, 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 they're similar to the Ford uh, Pinto carburetor, twin carburetors on it, dual exhaust. Um, the uh, uh, crank was turned, and uh, I, I told you about the new cam. So it's just ready to go in. I've already broke it in. It's just uh, I just haven't had the uh, desire yet as this 216 still starts and still runs and for what i do with this old truck uh that's good enough but i'm getting kind of tired of smelling like an oil refinery after i drive this thing for about an hour so i'm probably going to swap it also uh find all them holes in that firewall and plug them up perhaps too and anyway i'm gonna put that distributor back together and fire this thing up and see how it does Alright, let's see if that camera will stay still. We'll try to start this thing up. Chris is up in patient. Thanks for your time on hold, Chris. Good morning. Good morning. How are you all? Brother, we're having a good time on this rebuilt about uh, 21,000 miles ago and that bottom end well the last oil sticker I seen on this thing was it had 99,400 miles so it's probable that that bottom end has got uh, at least 120,000 miles on it so uh, the blow by is not really apparent right yet because it's not warmed up it will uh, start pouring uh, some low by through those three vents. One, two, three. Uh, I've added a PCV valve to try to alleviate that, and it's just uh, it's, the bottom is just warped. With all six plugs in this engine, I can easily spin it by hand. So I've never done a compression test on it, and I'd be surprised uh, if it even was at 90 pounds, but. It still runs full hills. Uh, it'll even do 65 for a short time. Uh, that's the uh, off uh, uh, Knox uh, Rochester B carburetor. Uh, 
it came on this engine. I'm the second owner, and it's uh, I rebuilt it for the kit, and it does okay. I, I imagine a Carter would do better, but it does good, and uh, I'm not going to put a whole lot in it. I'm actually wanting to uh, take this out while it's still good, running shape, and not ruin it, and uh, perhaps uh, rebuild it. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, it's doing good. We're going to take it out for a road test here shortly. All right. We're done with the PM. And we're going to go out here and give it a little test run. See how it does. Drop a little trash off at the dump. Well, it's nice having a parking brake again. So anyway, thanks for watching. All right, I was uh was done, but I wanted to go over a few other things before uh, before I close this. Uh, the carburetor was is a Rochester B, and it's uh, it's really off my line by uh, most people that collect these old trucks. I think the problem with them was uh, uh, too many hands got on them and uh, basically messed them up. Uh, I've heard experts say that the uh, castings will go bad naturally once you break them loose once they all never go back together again Well that carburetor on that truck there me being the second owner uh, Probably hadn't been taken apart before and I did take it apart and cleaned it out and rebuilt it and It's uh, it's doing good. It doesn't leak power valve works. I've got plenty of power starts good so maybe I've got one of those rare Rochester bees on there. Uh, if I was going to keep that 216, I'd probably hunt down the uh, the uh, Carter. I think it's a YF Carter that goes on it. And anyway, and over here to the 235 that is going to eventually go in that truck. Uh, those those carburetors are 3232 Carter Webers. Now they are uh, that means they're two barrel carburetors. So technically with those two two barrels, that's uh, the equivalent of a four barrel. And uh, they uh, the uh, the primaries, uh, uh, there's two uh, the, the two primaries uh, will uh, as for your idle and low speed, and then it'll uh, and when the secondaries is basically you only open up when you go to over uh, uh, half throttle to full throttle and that's when you get the full effect so anyway I wanted to point that out on the uh, on this engine uh, I had broke it in uh, the cam and everything on this uh, run stand and it's been sitting far too long I just need to get the motivation to do the swap but uh, anyway the test drive went real good uh, this old truck uh, I pulled the uh, pan, oil pan, before and with the intent of um, maybe removing the shims to see if I can increase the oil pressure. Well, somebody had already done that, so there, there wasn't any shims on the mains. No, uh, and they, they, uh, they uh, did a plastic gauge and they came up to about three thousandths, which is pretty much the maximum uh, you'd want on them. And uh, pretty close to the same on the rods, and those are Babbitt rods. So... Like I said, the engine, it, uh, I'm running 15W40 oil, and uh, I would run 2050 if I could get it as cheap as I can get that 1540, but uh, uh, the way this leaks oil, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of money on, on oil that just I'm just cleaning the pavement with. So anyway, oh, and brakes. Uh, how do you know if you need to adjust your brakes? Well, the best way is if you got to pump them to stop. Uh, when you have the brakes properly adjusted on these hooks, you've got a pedal that'll travel about three quarters of an inch, no more than an inch before you've got solid pedal. 
and you should not have to pump them when they're prop when everything is new and properly adjusted so if you're pump if you got hook brakes and you're pumping them you need to adjust them and you need to adjust all four uh you can go by the manual it says to let them free spin more i like a little friction on mine i've done that even with from habits from the bendix back in the day so anyway uh i took it out for about a two hour run and it did good and uh can't think of anything else so uh, hopefully this has been helpful for you and thanks for watching